I was at a barbecue yesterday and someone called me old. No, Shane, they were asking if you're an old boy. They wanted to know if you went to private school. Oh, oh, okay, okay, that makes more sense because there was a bit of an argy-bargy. Someone was getting fired up over school funding. It's just not fair. If you're choosing to send your kids to grandma, then you should pay for it yourself. Which led to... No, it's fairer if all kids get the same money. People should be allowed to have a choice. And then from across the backyard came... A private school's even that much better. What a waste of money. Then it was on to young and old. It seems to be such a quintessentially Australian thing for the school system to be a topic of conversation at the barbecue. Just like real estate. You have shared public resources and people strongly held personal views about what's best for their kids, both rubbing up against the facts. So while we're on that, why does the government give money to private schools? Well, it's historical. Going back to the 60s when the government felt the need to prop up Catholic schools to prevent their collapse. It soon became a hot political issue, even partisan for some. But since then, the education industry has boomed and Australia now has one of the highest proportions of private schools in the world. And as pointed out, it's super divisive. Right, so funding aside, what about outcomes? Parents presumably make choices around what they think is best for their kids. Totally, but studies show that when you account for socioeconomic factors, results from public and private schools are kind of the same. It seems how well you do in school and in life has more to do with your family and your background. Wait, then why would you send your kids to a private school? Well, there are a whole bunch of factors. Like obviously people make choices that make financial sense to them. And if you can make that choice, there might be religious reasons, better resources and facilities, or sometimes even the fear that your kid might miss out. These are the Courtney facts. The number of kids going to private high schools in Australia is growing, jumping 70% since 2012, while the number of enrolments for private primary schools has been decreasing. The split between government and non-government school has been a part of our culture for decades. Why have they chosen a private school? Are they simply buying another status symbol, as one of the state school boys maintain? Or are they influenced by other things? I don't believe this business about snobbery. The snobbery exists in the mind of the people who are wondering whether to send their sons there or not, and no doubt some children are sent to schools for the wrong reason. And believe it or not, it's also uniquely Australian. The rather pip-pip old school tie tradition is something you don't expect to be taken too seriously in a so-called classless society. But there are still plenty of people in Australia today who are prepared to pay a lot for the privilege of wearing the right school tie. We are a big outlier on the international scale. There are not a lot of countries that have non-government sectors as big as ours. This is Paul Kidson, an education academic. He's also been the principal of a few non-government schools. He says growth in this sector can be traced back to the 60s. Back then, kids who weren't at public school were mostly in the Catholic system, with a handful at exclusive independent schools, generally for the rich. Enrolment day at Geelong Grammar, the kind of day when big cars in the drive hardly rate a second glance. While we were filming this, for instance, it was a Bentley, a Mercedes and a Jaguar, all pulled up within a hundred yards further down the drive. Only wealthy people can afford to send their sons here. But then the Catholic schools found themselves in crisis. It was on the 11th of July 1962 that it was announced that 1,900 pupils attending Catholic schools in the Goulburn Diocese would attempt to enrol in local state schools. Increasing costs and enrolments since the war had become an intolerable burden. Parents resented paying tax towards a state education system their children didn't share in. Paul says that they were at risk of closure, leaving all the students looking for new schools in the public system. At that point, there was a real clear awareness that that would be a very difficult challenge for New South Wales Department of Education to meet if all of a sudden, around the state, they had all of these students just turn up at their schools. There wouldn't be enough facilities, there wouldn't be enough teachers. Oh, right. From here, the line between funding for government and non-government schools began to blur. It soon became a hot button political issue. What was happening politically was that the Australian Labor Party had been kept out of office for 23 long years by the split between the Australian Labor Party, which is a progressive party, and the Democratic Labor Party, the DLP, which was a Catholic, socially conservative party. This is Jane Caro, a board member of the Public Education Foundation. Whitlam wanted to be in government. So what he did was he came up with a political deal 
where they would promise to give Catholic parents, Catholic schools, recurrent funding. Not capital funding, which is what Menzies had done, but recurrent. You can depend on it, it's coming every year. And this won the Catholic vote. Whitlam went on to win the election and the Catholics got their money. What then happened was a number of other families for whom they'd been in, in Department of Education schools, but themselves had a very particular view when, well, maybe there's an opportunity for us to open our own schools that similarly have a perspective and a, cult, a character and a, and a, a, a culture that reflects our vision of the world. Now, they're not all religious-based schools. Some of them had educational um, approaches such as Montessori or Steiner schools. And so you had this proliferation, this absolute explosion during the 70s, 80s, 90s. There was a growing aspirational middle class who were suddenly presented with a choice and the idea that private schools could theoretically, provide a better education. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is when the awkward barbecue conversations began. Now I think uh, that you're paying for uh, through your taxes and everything else for the public schools for your benefit and everybody else's benefit. I see why you shouldn't use it. Oh, I think the discipline's better. And uh, oh, I think everybody needs a good standard education out there. You think you get a better standard of education out of yeah. private school than a public? Uh, Yes, I think you do. While the number of non-government schools grew, so was the money being put into them by the government, particularly the Commonwealth. It's actually a, a, a serious bone of contention because at a constitutional level, states and territories have responsibility for school-based education. And so for the Commonwealth government to engage in directly funding schools has caused some level of uh, concern amongst some people. These days, almost 65% of kids go to public schools. Each of them is funded to the tune of around $14,000 a year. Most private school kids are closer to $12,000 funded by the taxpayer. But then, of course, there are fees from parents on top of that. It's a complex hybrid funding model from the Commonwealth and the states to do with sliding scales of need. But the funding is what led to those fierce arguments. It has been a fairly toxic political debate. It's one that is, they sometimes had quite partisan divides. And that's really unfortunate because the losers ultimately are the educators within the schools that get caught in between it. Uh, it's parents that don't get the information uh, in an objective way that, that helps them to make good decisions. That's Glenn Fay, the Director of Education at the Centre for Independent Studies. He supports funding private schools because he says that it makes them more accessible. And what that means is that there is not the same kind of inequality that you see in other countries that have got high levels of uh, private schooling. In those countries, private schooling is, is uh, an option only available to the very wealthy. In, and it's true that there are some schools in Australia where that's the case, but by and large, the vast majority of students, or more importantly, the parents of students in non-government schools are not overwhelmingly wealthy. Right, because the range of schools in the non-government sector is massive, with fees ranging from $40,000 a year to 2000 And some, like Jane, think this actually increases inequality. That we take all the middle-class kids out of the public system and we basically create sinks of advantage and disadvantage, which is what we have done. We are residualising our public education system so that it becomes the kind of welfare system of last resort for the poor. Jane says countries with less choice end up with better outcomes. It's much more damaging, in fact, to the public system than those countries that have the 5% who, who, you know, attend the ritzy ratsy schools and then everybody else goes to the public system because at least then you've got the majority of parents, including almost all the middle class, invested in the quality of the public system, making sure that it's good and it's fair. Over the years, while politicians and pundits have argued about money, three groups have emerged in Aussie homes. Those who have no choice but to send their kids to the public system, those who are definitely sending their kids to private schools, and those who are conflicted, unsure whether they want to fork out the money for private education. There are not a lot of countries that have non-government sectors as big as Owls. And there's uh, some good evidence to say that that's, if you'd like, appealing to a, a middle class aspiration that says, I want something different than what I'm getting at my local government school. 
look, private schools can cost a lot of money, so that's got to be worth something, surely. Stop calling me Shirley. Well, that's really hard to quantify. It depends on how you measure it. A study released this year compared the scores of kids at private and public schools, and there was little difference when you account for socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, the literature, not only in Australia, but also worldwide, uh, tells us that uh, once you control and you take into account the socioeconomic characteristics of the family, academic results are not significantly different between private and um, public schools. But I read that around 75% of the schools with top HSC results were non-government schools. Uh, quite likely, it is the family status what determines which type of children go to private schools. And this is normally associated and very highly correlated with very high educational attainment of the parents. Parents are very likely to be university graduates and uh, children belong to better off families when attending uh, private schools. And this is the reason why private schools perform better. Dr. Esperanza Vera Toscano is a researcher at the University of Melbourne. She worked on the survey that found enrollments in private high schools are increasing. So if this better off or well off family children were to go to a, a public a school uh, their results would be exactly the same what one of the, one of the i suppose one of the constraints that we have in this debate is that it's often framed as if it's a public versus private debate but it's really a postcode debate so well, there's a lot more similarities between a local government school and a local non-government school than there is between a government school in a less advantaged area and a government school in a highly advantaged area. Uh, so the key, the key differences that we see uh, when we look at educational advantage and disadvantage is ones based on postcode, not on school sectors. So things that appear different might be more similar than you think. Despite this evidence, people are still sending their kids to private schools. But why? Well, people have a perception that you get a better education there. I've been a principal in a number of schools for over a decade. For some families, there will be a perceived benefit that they're going to get. Now that benefit, in fact, may not be as real as they perceive it to be. And for some, it's about more than just test scores. There might be an extensive co-curricular activity range at one school. There might be a particular history that you've got. You know, my mother went there or my grandfather went there. There might be a religious affiliation that is important to the family. So there's going to be a range of uh, varied responses to why families seek out non-government schooling. Well, why? What uh, do you expect from a private school? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps there's a certain amount of tradition in my family. Some parents believe private schools give their kids a chance to meet the right people and network to help them later in life. Well, if you were employing someone, say, would you give preference to someone who'd been educated in a private school? I think I would, because I, I think that you tend to employ someone who, who possibly is somewhat an image of yourself. And it's true that some non-government schools might have the finances to provide better resources like gymnasiums and libraries. Or even the kind that helped during a global pandemic. Exactly. It's this difference in resources that makes people upset. Public schools know how much money matters and that they haven't got enough for the task that they have to do. They, they think they're really it and they act real posh, most of them. They act as though like they're superior to us. At the end of the day, the choice is very personal and maybe that's what gets people fired up. I think why this gets so heated is you're really talking about something very close to people's hearts and that is their anxiety about their children. So one of the reasons we have very anxious parents is because we've turned parental choice into this nirvana, which it isn't. And so people have to make a choice between schools, not just between public and private, but between private and private. And that paralyzes them and agonizes them and it makes people fight with one another about whether they've made the right choice. The best approach to any academic success is going to be where students are actively engaged in positive, effective learning environments with families that are supportive and in clear partnership with the school. Now that happens across all sectors. Maybe in the final analysis, it's the individual that really matters and not whether he wins or loses but how well he played the game.